Hello, my name is Jay Thomas, and I'm going to talk about DevOps, DevSecOps, and how they connect verification and validation activities to the cloud. To begin with, I'm going to discuss what are DevOps and DevSecOps and talk about how they fit into what we are more familiar with, which is certification. From there, I will take us to some case studies where I will highlight how our customers are using DevOps and DevSecOps today to help improve their product and their release cadence. And finally, I'll draw upon some conclusions where we will discuss increasing levels of maturity as we approach the world of DevSecOps. First, let's talk about DevOps. So DevOps is a set of culture. It's a set of best practices that connect software development and IT. Because often software development was done without much thought in terms of how it would be deployed out into the world. And uh, so many products failed when they, when they reached de deployment. DevSecOps extends this, given the practice that all of our devices are always connected. When I recently took a flight uh, for the first time in a couple of years, uh, many things were the same. But one thing that was dramatically different was that all of my devices stayed connected all of the time and uh, everything worked. So we're, we're, we're moving towards this era of increasingly universal connectivity, uh, which is great from a consumer point of view. But from a security point of view, it means our devices are always vulnerable. So. To solve that problem, DevSecOps takes some of the best practices from verification and validation and incorporates elements of security. A life cycle view of DevSecOps is similar to DevOps in that it connects software development and IT slash deployment. But the difference is the processes are not those about quality. The processes are about security. They are about uh, reducing the threats in the software lifecycle and when the software product is deployed in the world, testing it against security constraints. So it is really an extension of cybersecurity layered on top of DevOps. When we dive into the details, there are three themes and maturity levels. And we'll, we'll touch upon these again in the conclusion. The first is this idea of shifting left which we in the avionics space are very familiar with. We want to find our defects early before the, the risks can be catastrophic. Continuous integration is also a key element. But one of the things that DevSecOps does well is scale. It is intended for use by large organizations. So there are many practices that extend from the individual developer to very large teams. So these themes build upon each other and provide a progression of activities that users and developers can embrace as they explore the concepts. So in DevSecOps, instead of static analysis, static analysis is called SAST. The, the principles are, are the same, but now we look at static analysis in the context of security testing. So what does this mean? And much of it is very similar to what we've seen in other arenas, checking the code against defects, stopping defects from being introduced into the code. But the extension is that instead of using a traditional standard such as MISRA, CERT or CWE and CVE, those databases of defects are often used in SAS processes. Uh, why is SAST so important? Because it finds the vulnerabilities early when it's easy to fix them and prevent them from going out into the field. One other concept that I found very interesting and, and powerful from the DevSecOps view of static analysis is in the diagram here. We want our tools to trend toward that ideal vulnerability detection. We want minimal false positives, and as many true positives as possible. Finding the true positives is the most important 
element here. And this is something we've really strived for in the last few releases of LDRA. If you look at the release notes, there are dozens and dozens of improvements against false positive detection. Uh, so we really want to strive toward that ideal vulnerability detection. And we've done a lot of work to reaching that both with traditional standards such as MISRA and some of the more security oriented standards. Dynamic analysis in security testing is actually a little different from what we've seen as dynamic analysis in the certification space. Generally, it is not done on the source level. It is generally done on the application level. It has a number of elements, some of which are, we are, are common and familiar with, and some of which are not as common in the aviation and avionics space. For instance, fuzz testing is very similar to what we see in boundary testing. Again, in the DAS space, it is usually done at the binary level, but doing it on the source level is also very valuable when you have the source code. Other elements include penetration testing and uh, memory usage detection and auditing of permissions. And these are, are elements that need to be considered separately from the processes that you have already have for uh, certified development. So DAST is about making sure your product works well once it is out in the world. But the big advantage of it is it is generally done on the product after it ships, after it's put together. So the problem is when you have everything together and find a defect, you have to go back to the software development lifecycle to fix it and to, to make things better. So it is much more expensive to do to find defects on the DAST side versus the SAS side. If we look at how this fits with certification, there are many elements that are very similar or the same. They are both process driven, they focus on quality, and they focus on life cycle costs. So there's a lot of overlap here, uh, but DevSecOps is typically done in agile environments, but it doesn't have to be. And similarly, Certification is typically done in waterfall environments where you release a product, pr product and you don't have continuous updates, but it doesn't have to be. And again, moving certification to agile developments is a trend that we're seeing throughout the, the certification space. So from here, I wanted to present a couple of case studies where I, I wanted to highlight some of the work that our customers do on the DevSecOps front. Uh, and in some of these cases, I'll discuss uh, the, the processes generally, and I won't uh, dive into the specifics of the customers because not, not all, all of our, our customers want to uh, have their, their details exposed. So one that I wanted to highlight because I, I found the work to be very interesting is we have a major airframer who has introduced continuous integration in the testing of their flight management systems. And they do this uh, using the Altisan tools, Jira and Bamboo uh, to provide continuous integration. Uh, and some of the other elements that I found were really interesting in, in this implementation is they drew heavily on simulation. They, they wrote their own CPU accurate, cycle uh, accurate simulator that simulates the aircraft CPU, including down to the peripheral level where the peripherals might be the different parts of the aircraft. That allows them to run their system test continuously as they make changes to their code. When they do a check-in, the change triggers a build which executes a simulation on the aircraft as a whole, gathers results, makes sure the plane flies correctly, and pushes uh, those results back into a repository. One of the other elements that I found was, was very interesting here is that JUnit became uh, important as a way to interchange results between LDRA and continuous integration systems. JUnit is not just for Java, it is just a way to interchange unit test results. Uh, and what was really interesting is that the JUnit format 
was really not that different from what we've used for, for many, many years in, 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 in TB run. So it is an easy transformation from the TB run regression report to J unit format. And J unit format then exposes the different test cases and shows which test cases pass, which test cases fail, and why. Uh, and what's really interesting about producing results in J unit format is J unit allows all those results to be aggregated together and displayed in the continuous integration system. And so in this case, my customer used Altasan Bamboo and was able to see results for thousands of subsystems, thousands of individual source files together, both in the context of system test and unit test, because all of those individual J unit tests are aggregated together for overall results. Another case I wanted to highlight was the increasing use of government clouds. This is something that was more or less unheard of a few years back when governments were moving more to air gap networks in, in all cases. So the, the, you know, the world has changed, especially with the advent of COVID restrictions. COVID restrictions uh, forced many of our go government customers to bring many of their development and verification and validation activities home. And so they became familiar with best practices around cloud providers and cloud execution. So one initiative from the US Air Force is Platform One. And Platform One is an initiative that seeks to integrate DevSecOps processes into all of the DOD uh, software development lifecycle processes. And so that, you know, while it was spearheaded by the Air Force, it is a DOD wide scope initiative. And there is a, a lot of information available for it online. I do suspect other governments will move towards this type of solution where you have uh, specific containerized environments for uh, governmental organizations. And these, these clouds can be either on the internet or completely air gapped, but the infrastructure is the same. And that's what I'll get into next. The infrastructure is based on containerization of software development tools, containerization of build tools, and the interaction between software developers and verification authorities, such as in this case, NIST or uh, the VA. And they all can access the same assets in the same platform across their own secure networks, not necessarily the internet. This may, not, may or may not be bridged to the, net, to the internet. But all of these houses can then execute their development activities and gather uh, their, their artifacts in terms of how their code executed and share results and infrastructure with each other. So this has been a, a great case where we, we can highlight how LDRA can be put into a container, how it can integrate with build tools that are also containerized and how the results can flow back to the managers and, and, and the rest of the team. And then one more example of a, a customer embracing the, the DevOps processes is uh, we have uh, several customers that are using Azure. Azure is a Microsoft-based uh, cloud provider. And one of the interesting things is that both Azure and AWS, so AWS is Amazon Web Services, the Amazon equivalent. The interesting thing is that both Amazon and Microsoft had thought about executing from the cloud all the way down to embedded devices from the beginning. And the reason they did that is both of those organizations have a lot of embedded devices. Uh, and so they needed a way to test their embedded devices. So both have analogous methodologies that are called cloud agents. And these agents allow you to uh, aggregate your results in, in the cloud, build your processes in the cloud, but execute on a 
individual PC uh, connected to a target. So you can build in the cloud and still connect to a PC on your desk and make sure that uh, make, make sure that that your results are correct. And that's great because it, it, it allows you to bridge the gap between those two worlds and present results in a uniform way while still connecting to the embedded target. In terms of the, the, the architecture view, the, one of the key elements is putting LDRA into a container. Another element that we often see is that in these containerized environments, everything is dynamic, not when everything is atomic. So when you do an analysis, you first have to check out a code repository, uh, run the analysis, and then when you're done, you push the results into uh, a shared volume, which allows you to then interact with your, your compiler and your other tools. To dive a little deeper into the view, the cloud execution view always has first a repository pull into a container, then execution of either analysis or tests in the container, connecting to a local PC, which then might have an embedded device connected to it, executing on the embedded device. That's the, the interesting thing about these cloud agents. They, they connect you know, our, our intangible cloud to something that's very physical on your desk. So the agent connects to the device, executes the tests, captures the results in one of the appropriate formats. And, and the appropriate formats include JSON, HTML, and JUnit. And I think the most important part here is view the summary. The, 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 these tools allow you to summarize results from thousands of files, thousands of tests, and draw things together. They also have pipeline views that allow you to set up gating tasks. So the development needs to be done before the test. And the test might be done on test environment one or test environment two, and then push to production and have checkboxes to have manual approval and review of the results as appropriate. Azure, for instance, has a language YAML, which is used to put together these pipelines and set up the gating checks. And finally, they allow you to aggregate the results. The aggregated results, while they are displayed in an, an Azure web view, they include the LDRA reports embedded inside the Azure web view, including the quality review report, the, the overall quality review report showing the metrics, the test manager report, which shows the higher level views of, of code review and, and, and the other elements. And all of these are clickable down to the individual code review report. So you can click down and see which elements pass and fail on, on, on a code review level. Those uh, results are all summarized together. And because these have been used by large organizations, the, those summaries can include tens of thousands of components and tens of thousands of tests. And all of those are displayed together in, in really nice dashboards. And what, what makes that happen is the JUnit format under the hood, JUnit, and some of the other reporting formats such as XML, JSON, and HTML that LDRA support act as glue that allow you to tie the, the results from executing on a target back to those overall dashboards. We at LDRA also have put a lot of work in terms of improving our reporting for the, the DevSecOps view of the world. So one of the things that we put together in version 10 was the security report. The security report allows you to see not just one coding standard, but multiple coding standards at a time. And it allows you to highlight what are the highest and lowest security defects and view them by standard. All of these elements are clickable, so you can dive in to see exactly what the defect was. 
one of the other principles that we, we, we found was, was useful here was if you find a defect that appears in multiple standards, it's very likely something that you need to spend some, some time to, to resolve. The compliance reports have also been enhanced. One of the things that I found was really nice about the newer compliance reports is they show compliance with respect to the underlying standard. While the LDRA rules are still there, the, the compliance reports are, are displayed in terms of MISRA C or whatever your coding standard is and show the text from the underlying standard and, and uh, show the, the violations uh, as with respect to the underlying standard, which makes it easier to uh, explain to your management and it makes it easier to resolve the problems. The code coverage analysis report has also been enhanced. The, it's been enhanced with the newer look and feel of all the reports, as well as displaying results with the original source code lines, which makes it clearer to explain the defects to developers and to management, because you can see in the original source lines where what was covered and what has not been covered. In terms of regression testing, enhancements have also been made in TB Extreme. TB Extreme is a tool that is used in the certification space to test for boundaries. Enhancements have also been made to allow you to enter additional values, which makes this tool very usable in the DAST space as a fuzz testing tool. You can enter as many values as you want or as many ranges as you want, or even use code to put in specific values. And that allows you to create thousands of tests to test against boundaries and to get test against potential, um, potential error cases that might lead to a segmentation fault or might lead to a runtime defect, which can be exploited in the security space to uh, gain access to your code. So to draw back to some conclusions, we, we've talked about uh, the overlap between DevOps and DevSecOps, but I also wanna emphasize that if you build your DevOps processes around certification, DevOps becomes another way to enforce your certification processes. So it is a way to cut down your overall cost to market because you are doing your certification activities from the beginning of your, your software life cycles. DevSecOps also make sure that you're doing these processes continuously. You are always aware of and trying to address potential security vulnerabilities. Automation, integration into continuous integration systems and reporting are critical elements that allow the, these processes to span from the embedded target to the cloud and produce results that are coherent, repeatable, and explainable to your entire team. Finally, I wanted to talk a little bit about how we can shift left our security processes in DevSecOps. So these are the different increasing maturity levels in DevSecOps. Shifting left is about implementing SAST, implementing software development processes around static analysis that can find faults early and resolve them early. IDE integration is a key way to do that because that makes static analysis easily enable in every developer workflow. This allows you to find the defects before they go out into the field, which is much less expensive to fix than when the defects are out, out into the field. When we get into the next maturity level, continuous integration, continuous integration is about iterative resolution of problems and automation of the life cycle and customizable pipelines. So your, your processes get put into your customizable pipeline so that they are simple, iterative, and repeatable. 
These are all efficiencies afforded by continuous integration. I had a colleague tell me that continuous integration is the key to ludicrous release cadence. It really helps you get your job done faster because you know that the changes that are implemented by your software development uh, flow to the field without breaking something else. The overall message here is that certification and the V model is not that different from what's asked in DevSecOps. The difference is instead of the classic V model, we're turning that V into a circle. We are repeating our process around requirements, getting those requirements into code, test and acceptance testing. So if we consider when we create an incremental change, we can add the incremental difference in requirements and also the incremental difference in tests and make sure they don't change anything else. And that's really what's afforded by DevSecOps, the ability to do incremental changes in a V model of development. DevSecOps enforces that efficiently so that you know that the changes will, will work correctly and get out into the field. And the software will do what it is supposed to do. And then finally, scale. Uh, what I thought was interesting is that all of these processes about DevOps and DevSecOps were built around large organization. When we consider the engineering problems that are approaching the certification space, they're just getting bigger. They can't always be solved by a small, clever team. They often require a lot of engineers. And on the screen, I highlighted my, my experience at, at SpaceX. When, we, when I started at the company, it was about 100 employees. But by the time the company was at the point that it was landing rockets, the company had expanded to 10,000 employees. Not all problems can be solved by a small group working alone. We often need to work with very large groups, very large problems, and work together. So DevSecOps provides processes to do that because all of the things that we've seen in terms of executing thousands of test cases from thousands of modules tie very well to scale. And that enables us to solve the, the, the large new problems coming up, autonomous vehicles, flying cars, consumer spaceflight. All of these will require a lot of engineering and DevSecOps allows us to do that efficiency efficiently. Thank you.